Hello, welcome back. Glad you're here. And of course the dogs have just started barking as well. Yeah, yeah. It is mail time here at the uh well, at the whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I wanted to try something a little different. Today's race has been um one of those where the wind gets into the peloton and, as they like to say, blows the race apart, which is certainly what's happened. So, as you can see, I'm starting with a much smaller scale than I normally do. It's, um, of course, right now as I lay this out, here I'll talk about other stuff. So... We'll start with the, uh, please be sure to, if you like what you see and you want to see more, to um, subscribe and um, make sure you get notifications for your subscription so you'll see when I pop the next video up. Because unlike my studio stuff, which when I'm not doing the racing, I try to do once a week, these videos depend on... Um, when races are being contested. So if there's no racing on, um, then obviously I can't be pacing it, painting it. And there's plenty of different racing. This is, um, of course, the World Tour Road Racing, and that's where my interests lie. But there's pretty much bike racing all year long. Um, the road season starts with this race the world the um, tour down under and then is sporadic spring classics that run all the way up until the grand tours one of my favorite multi-day spring classics is perry nice and that race is um when is it this year i wrote it down somewhere but that's um late spring oh perry nice is first usually roughly the first week first week and a half of march and then but the bef before after sorry not remembering now um is perry roubaix such a wonderful classic with the cobble races there's a few other cobbled but Perry Roubaix is such an iconic race. And um, this is the last, no, two years now we've had the women's Perry Roubaix as well, which I'm really thrilled is back. And I try to paint um, in support of women's cycling and paint women's racing. Plus, off times, the racing is more exciting than it is in the men's. And then we can talk about why that might be the case. But so now that I've gotten this Peloton drawn in here, I can talk a little bit about what's going on. So as you can see, it's this long diagonal line across the roadway. And that's because the wind is blowing from this side. Is that right? No, this side. So this rider right here is in the wind. The guy on the front's always, you know, into the wind. But as the peloton, each, you know, you get behind each rider, normally you'd line up right behind them. But when the wind's coming from a side, you go off and you put your front wheel. So this is the first rider. The next rider will slot in here because if he's back here, he's not getting the wind coming from here. He's not getting any block any draft, so he slides up inside of here. And by doing that, he um, then gets um, shelter from the wind. But there's a strategy called half the road, and a cyclist and af af activist who I'm an author I'm very fond of and We've become, we've met a couple of times and sort of, you know, I, I 
use that phrase, internet friends, where we communicate through social media. I own a, a signed copy of her book that she actually sent me. And then, um, and of course, I've bought copies of her books. But she has a book called Half the Road, and that's a double entendre dealing with the fact of, you know, sort of a play on the expression, women hold half the sky. And it's, you know, let's face it, women are half of the population and yet seem to not get an equal representation. And then half the road, this is where I was going with this. So this rider is going all the way to this side of the road, so giving plenty of people the opportunity to shelter. Now, if he was trying to get rid of these people, he would then move over to this side of the road and then only his teammates or her teammates, if the case may be, could shelter and then these people would scramble or they'd start another echelon line. Sometimes you'll see multiple diagonals, echelons of on the road. But this is the chase group. We're gonna call this echelons in Australia since I've used the title echelons a few times before. And this was sort of the story of the stage. Now what's happened is the lead group split away the last time they got on this stretch of road and broke the race apart. And then there was a wreck at the back end of that group too, which further split it. So these guys are in the um, unenviable task of trying to chase down the group ahead. Now they are making progress. They're now just about a minute behind, but it's um, a slow go. They've got 52 kilometers, so as long as things don't get too crazy, they should be able to manage it. Now one of the notables that's missed the break is right in here. This is Jumbo Visma, the yellows, and their leader is Rowan Dennis. Rowan Dennis was in the um, Ochre Jersey initially. Was the second? Yeah, second yellow jersey or the Ochre Jersey race leader of this race. But he missed the move. And so his team, he has teammates up front, but his, um, he's now in the position of having, hoping to be able to chase back. Now, he just didn't have the legs yesterday and so lost the jersey and wasn't able to go with the moves and so lost a fair amount of time. I think he's two minutes back now. But um, but you'll see as I paint this that the teams have kind of clumped into their team colors and are working together. So they've all found their teammates that also missed the move. And so they've sort of clumped themselves together in hopes of working together to pull it back together. And it's now also like some of these guys will put one or two of their teammates up front. So this is Archaic Samson, who I think missed the move except for one or two, but certainly their team leaders aren't up front. So they're the ones driving the pace right now, trying to bring this all back together. Now in this image, just off the front are two riders who are like, yeah, come on, I'm done with you guys. You're not gonna work, I'm going. And of course, there's a few fans out along the side of the road watching watching this story play out. And one of the things I do have to do, my TV times out. 
and I'm sure I've talked about it, but so I'm, I watch the race and then find a visual image, something that sort of tells the story of the race, tells the story of racing like this one does, and is, I hope, visually interesting. It's always the case whenever making art that the viewer will never see what you were painting from, what your subject matter was, the model, the any of the particulars about the image you're painting. So it's on the artist to make what you paint interesting. So if something isn't quite in the right position in your subject matter, um, you can change it. Nobody's going to see what you were painting from. They're only going to see your final product. So it's on you to make your final product what's interesting. So, um, so when I'm working on these, I'm not only trying to tell the story of the racing, like I said, and the story of echelons, but also trying to make an image that cal captivates the viewer. And now, obviously, cyclists, current and pro racers, I've actually pleased that even with this tour, I've already sold a painting to one of the people depicted in one of the paintings. It's always exciting for me, let's face it, you know. I admire these people, I'm fans of, of what they do, and to have them be interested in what I do is, is a great compliment. Who wouldn't be pleased? So, but what I was trying to go with is, um, Sorry, always thinking, talking, and painting all at the same time. Sometimes it's a little tough. Just wanted to pop that red up a little more. But what I'm trying to say is um, the non-cyclist should find this an engaging image as well. You know, that's these aren't... Art is both very specific, or my art is at least. It's about very specific things. They're real moments. If you look at my large paintings, I paint a lot. Well, all of my work has a narrative element and they're all real experiences, real things. But hopefully the way I present my art, it is also an engaging, you don't need to know have experienced the specifics that I'm depicting, but the sense or the story or the emotion that's in my work is a universality. So the same thing with the cycling, or slightly different, but the point being, you want to create images that are engaging for multiple audiences as opposed to singular audi audiences. Do you know what I mean by that? So, while this is a particular pain about a particular race and a particular moment in that particular race, it should also be an engaging image, something that's pleasant to look at, even if you don't know the specifics of what's happening. So, and that should always be the case in art. It's, it's universality is in the 
honesty and the emotionality and the story that you're telling. And I'm a narrative artist, clearly. Certainly right now with this. So it's more important to me that the story is there, and, this, and so that's why I'm using. But abstract art should have the same level of impact. And just because there's not a, I mean, so this painting is vertical lines and a diagonal. It's an abstract painting in, in areas of color that are counterposed by the shadow line. That is the abstract structure of the piece. Because as I would always tell kids when I would lecture, all art is abstract. Because I am depicting a three-dimensional three dimensional moment, a slice of time. So time being the third dimension. Um, but I'm painting but I'm putting that into a still, non-moving, two-dimensional surface. So I, I have abstracted a three-dimensional reality into two dimensions. So I don't care how photorealistic a piece of art is. It is still abstract art. So now we're just laying in the road surface. And that will finish up this piece. So again, I'd love to get your feedback. What do you think of the work? Do you find it interesting? Particularly those of you who have stumbled upon this channel without knowing or caring about cycling. And have stuck around long enough to hear me say this. What do you think about this? Am I right? Is this an interesting image? Independent of one knowing what's happening in the image from a cycling standpoint. And now another thing you have to be aware of is my brush strokes are obvious. I mean, they, they appear. Obvious might be too strong of a word. So you notice that I'm not painting this way. I was when I was doing the shadows, but I'm going the direction of the roadway so that if those lines should show, as they will, they help reinforce the movement. So just finishing up. And now you can find, I write about, I post and write about all the work on my blog theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And then on those blogs, there'll be links to each painting depicted in the blog post back to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase the work. And they're reasonably priced. Um, $90 including shipping, unless of course it's shipping overseas. And in that case, an extra $10. And as I would imply by saying that, the work, I ship the work all over the world, which is a great compliment too. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it. I hope you'll check back. I hope you like what you saw. And therefore, we'll so, so, blah, 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 subscribe so that you can see the next paintings that come up. This is the, to use Phil Liggett's word, penultimate stage. So one more stage. So there'll be one more video of this racing, and then I'll go back to finishing the painting in the studio. Thanks again.